could be the biggest adventure of my entire trip. Getting on a taxi right here. Hopefully this guy knows where I'm going. Bus station. What's your name? Okay, okay. Sean. I think we're going in the right direction. I told him the Mochi BTS. Looking at your door. And we are sitting in traffic right now. Yes, I, I have to have give you my YouTube channel because you're gonna go on YouTube. You will be a YouTube star. YouTube star. <laughs> I'm showing him my YouTube channel. Now you are a subscriber. What is been looking at your door. Thank you, adios. I'm just kidding. I keep on accidentally speaking Spanish to all the locals. I have to take a bus to another bus station and then get on another bus. So that's gonna be the biggest challenge. All right, man, came to 7-Eleven and there's 7-Elevens that have all these soy milks. Soy milks I've never seen before, so I'll go with this one, whatever it is. Soy milk was terrible. It had chunks in it, so it's going in the wastebasket. I got the whole back of the bus to myself. I'm like the only tourist who I've seen at the bus station or on the bus. Just to give you a little bit of background of where I'm going, it's called Sakai Wright Field Station, and I don't know much about it. Just a couple weeks ago, I just Googled, you know, Biological Field Station Thailand. It came up online, finally got in contact with them in kind of a roundabout way. People from a number of universities around the world are, have done research there on reptiles. Uh, they have a big project going on with king cobras where they're actually radio tracking king cobras. Uh, through the little bit of contact I did have with one of their grad students, he said that I'm more than welcome to go check out what they're doing. Maybe I'll be allowed to take along and see what kind of field work they're doing. I've never been so close before. It's gonna be a four or five hour bus ride, I think, from Bangkok. It's out in the middle of nowhere. Sakai Rod itself, I don't think it's very well visited. Pretty much the only people who go there uh, are like volunteers and researchers. There's, I don't think there's hardly any tourists who go there. So it's a really unique experience and this is just the epitome of getting off of the beaten path. Got on the other bus, my connecting bus. I hope it's the right bus. Yeah, I actually got on the wrong bus and this great guy, what is your name? Ronnie. 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 Ronnie and From Germany. And his girlfriend, they're helping me out, get back on the right bus to go the right direction. The thing about this research station, it, it's so off the beaten path that not even the locals know about it. So that's the tough thing. We've been waiting here for maybe close to an hour. The thing is, we just don't really know when he's gonna come. We've asked these kids sitting here too. They don't really know either. The thing about this place is the bus just kind of comes when it comes. Hopefully it comes soon though, because I'm kind of tired of just sitting here. All right, man, the bus is here. It's following the, the school kids onto the bus. I'm back on the bus, going back the direction I came in. Hopefully we figured it out. Thank you. Now I'm gonna get a taxi. Field station is like 20 miles away from here. We're using the translation. Just asked him how many minutes it was. Sweet bro, let's rock on. I think we got it right because I pointed the place out to him out on a map. I'm in my room at the field station. I'm going to bed now because I'm getting up early. We got a lot of activities planned for tomorrow. Tracking tortoises, tracking snakes some educational outreach stuff with locals. Catch you tomorrow. Peace. The next morning I woke up, took a look around. I saw that it was the nicest, biggest field station I had ever been to and set off on a nature walk by myself. It's one way or the other. By myself here on one of the trails coming up from the field station. I'm just here in the forest and I know nothing about Thailand birds, but just doing my best to identify some birds and get some photos of birds. It's The air is not too hot, not too humid right now. It's just kind of the perfect temperature before the sun rises too high in the sky. So I am here underneath this big tree trying to identify some of these birds. It's the first time I've ever gone bird watching in Thailand and it just reminds me that when you come to an exotic place in the tropics where there's just tons of species that you've never seen before, it really just makes such a huge difference when you get a professional guide to show you around.
because I have no idea what I'm looking at. And even though I have my guidebook, it's hard to get photos. You can definitely learn the birds in a place like this if you're here for a while, but when you're just passing through, having someone who knows the birds really, really helps. And that's part of the reason why these guides are able to charge so much money to tourists. No way in between. Head back because I don't want to miss breakfast. I saw a few birds that I couldn't identify, but it was just a really cool walk, man. The thing is about walking through a tropical rainforest, just between all the vines and all of the other epiphytes, and just the whole look of tropical trees and tropical vegetation, it just kind of gives you this sort of mystical feel. It makes you feel like you're in some adventure, some storybook. <laughs> good breakfast nothing like having french fries for breakfast they're doing like an educational program for the school kids then i'm gonna go out on the next cobra tracking session through wonderful presentations like this the volunteers and researchers at sakurat are able to help the impacts of local communities on snakes as well as maximizing safety during human snake encounters this presenter did a great job and fully engaged the audience, especially when she showed everyone a live pit viper. Then after the presentation, I was allowed to hold a snake myself. Probably compared to most people here, I'm not quite as smooth with the snakes, but I would say I'm smoother than, you know, the majority of the population of humans. Just refuse to touch them. Then I had a chance to sit down with Max, the reptile research manager, and talk to him about the cobra research happening at the field station. What exactly are you studying? What questions are you trying to answer? So the main focus has always been spatial ecology, uh, where the king cobras are going, what habitats they're using, do they prefer forested areas, agricultural areas, human dominated areas. In, in terms of conservation in, in general, that you need to have an in-depth understanding of uh, an organism's natural history. Um, so like I said, exactly where it's going specifically you know in these human um, disturbed landscapes uh, that's where we really need to focus our conservation efforts so that we can start prioritizing uh, land use um, so say for example in an agricultural field we find that king cobras are using field margins or uh, cut vegetation piles then we can then go to the uh, landowners and say right we need to promote this king cobras on your on the land and that's where outreach and um, the education comes in also uh, we do a lot of outreach here um, a lot of education events once or twice a week we'll uh, run education events for uh, school groups because people are just scared of snakes in general especially right. such a large king cobra so you have to be able to tell them that okay we need to promote this but obviously they don't want them on their land uh, they're going to try and do the exact opposite so you've got to be able to try and teach them that they're not going to cause them any harm they just want to live their lives stay away from humans in general how this helps snake populations and and biodiversity in general uh, so king cobras are an apex predator on top of the food chain, say if the king cobra population just dwindled out completely, predators at the next trophic level, which specifically like reticulate pythons, and the Chinese spitting cobras, their populations will suddenly start to bloom, um, which also predate on small mammals uh, and snakes in general. Um, their populations will pretty much dwindle as a cause of the king cobra's population right. which is going out as well. So a trophic cascade, basically? Yeah, ex yeah, exactly. Very interesting. So, you know, the conservation status of one species can potentially affect an entire ecosystem. Yeah. Then, finally, it was time to try the cobras, so I hopped on a motorbike with my new friend, Sherry. Sherry is from Spain. He's here for a while uh, helping out doing the field work. So we're gonna radio track these cobras. You know, we're probably not gonna see the cobra because it's a large venomous snake. If you don't have to come into close contact with it, why would you, right? These are the instruments that we're using to, to mm -hmm. track the snake, right? This would be the antenna which amplified the signal. And this would be the receiver, which is the one that picks up the signal. This is the most exciting part because if we hear a signal, <laughs> then that's awesome. If we don't see a signal, that means he's probably somewhere lost and so we have to find him. Okay. There we go. You hear the beep? Right, I can hear that. So he's there? Try to pinpoint exactly where he is around that. Probably over there? Yeah. Okay, cool. 
Nice. Yeah, go down. So the data is taken on a form on the iPhone. Yep. That's that's very handy. Without a GPS, <laughs> I would have probably gotten lost here like every single day. I lose myself in my own neighborhood without yeah. my GPS. Real love, we'll get real love I hear it that way, then I'm gonna line forward. Interesting. And maybe I go around that way. Listen. And maybe that line will coincide with the first one. Interesting. And then I might go a little bit further up there just to make sure. Draw, listen, and if the signal comes from that point over there, and I draw a line and all three lines into the second one. Cool. That's pretty much where he would be. You're sort of just like drawing a map that sort of closes in on an area of where he possibly could be, and the more lines that you draw, you're able to narrow in on his location. Yeah. So Shetty's got the snake pinpointed. He's just confirming that it's not moving. As you can hear the radar, it's beeping consistently. It looks like it's stationary and he's entering in the data into this program on his phone. This is just so adventurous, you know, look at this place. We're in this ravine, climbing across boulders. This is what you call the adventure of a field biologist, right man? Exactly. And yeah, it's cool. There's a cobra somewhere in there and I guess one other point I'll make is even though we didn't get to see the cobra, just knowing that a wild animal is in there, it brings you closer to nature just knowing that it's there, right? You kind of know what I mean, you know? I know what you mean. It's just not any animal, it's just the king of the snake, the king cobra. Yeah. Not any king cobra, one that's about three meters long, so. Right. Big the king of the snakes. Come close with me. Just 